Was it worth it? I mean, I'll miss some of the old gang, but hey, they're in jail and I'm not. So yes. What? I was talking about the milkshakes. I was talking about the other thing, obviously. Are you a snitch? You brazenly ordered one of every milkshake because you couldn't decide which one you wanted. Every once in a while, I like to do something childhood me would have wanted to do just because I can. Childhood Michael was a sampler. Childhood me wanted to be the first woman to say Baba Booey in space. Hey, there's still time. Childhood Daniel wanted to hang out at diners with his friends. It's ridiculous, there's no time for that. Grow up. It doesn't matter what childhood you wants to do. Children are stupid. That's why they're smaller. You have to earn the mass that you take up in the world. But if you could go back to being a kid knowing what you know now, you wouldn't do it? What about being 17 again? Like that movie with Matthew Perry where he's 17 again. Except Matthew Perry isn't 17 again. He becomes Zac Efron, a gorgeous man-child who everyone trusts. And I already am those things. Oh, Dan, I can't come to your dog's graduation tomorrow. I'm sick. Oh no, feel better. Thanks. The reality behind any time traveling, body switching movie is horribly depressing if you think about it. No, body switching movies always have a positive message, whether it's uh, Freaky Friday or like Father Like Son. Mm -hmm. Well, those are classic body switching movies with two people. And yes, the message of those is daughter to mother, father to boy. Ah, I realize now we are not so different, you and I. But I'm talking about movies with one body switch, like 17 Again, the movie we were just talking about. I'm all caught up now. So, in 17 Again, Matthew Perry's character is having a bit of a rough patch in his life. He's going through a terrible divorce, and he's kind of a shitty dad to his teenage kids. Then, he meets a magical janitor, and boom, suddenly, he is 17 in the present. So, he enrolls in his kid's school and decides that he's gonna fix his relationships with his kids and his wife. That's kind Nice. Yeah, except they don't know it's him. He's not fixing any relationships. For all his kids know, he's just a, a really nice and handsome and handsome man-child who has his shit together. He's just forging completely new relationships as a weirdly invested teen. Meanwhile, their dad is still MIA. No, Soren's right. It's like if Batman's parents came back as a hot boy after being shot. I mean, Batman would still think that his parents were dead, even though they collectively are Zac Efron. Except it's way worse, because Matthew Perry's character has been missing the entire time, and no one has noticed. What does that say about his life? Oh, that he doesn't have any friends. Oh, he doesn't, though. That is sad. But what about his mail? What, what about his neighbors? People don't just disappear without someone noticing. But now, old Matthew Perry is out, new Matthew Perry is in, and he's basically gained about 20 years on his life. He was going through an awful, ugly divorce, and now he's realized that no one in his old life would miss him if he was gone. Why, why the hell would he ever go back to that miserable life? Oh my, does he hit on high school girls? Does he do that? Ah, his daughter's in high school. Does no, no. No, he does not have sex with his daughter. She tries to hit on him after he helps her break up with her abusive boyfriend because he's just really nice to her. And handsome. And handsome to her. And hilarity ensues. But just because he doesn't have sex with his teenage daughter doesn't mean that he isn't thinking about having sex with the other girls in her high school. He is a high school boy with high school hormones flowing through his body and adult experience. I don't like where this is going. Can we go to the opposite of this? In Big, Tom Hanks plays Josh Basket, a 12-year-old who is suddenly transformed into a 30-year-old man. Yes, and people do notice that he's missing. That's exactly right. The police assume that he is kidnapped and they search for him. They don't do a great job of it, because at no point does Josh's mom tell them about the 30-year-old man who showed up at her house to spew a bunch of info about her son. Clearly, she should assume that he is the kidnapper. And a crude police sketch could have been done of this assumed kidnapper who was actually Josh himself as a 30-year-old. Not to mention, he uses his real name, which would draw attention if his mysterious background didn't. Oh, it's me. It's Josh. Yeah, but this was before Amber Alerts. Maybe just you know, flew under the radar. He was promoted to VP of a major toy manufacturer and bought a huge loft in Manhattan. These things require background checks. At no point in the process was someone like, hey, you kind of look like the guy who kidnapped that kid. Also, your name is the name of that kidnapped kid. Also, since we're naming things, you don't have a diploma or any references. And uh, fourth thing, you know what? Don't need a fourth thing. I'm just gonna call the police right now about all those other things. Yeah, well, that's not the point. It's not ransom. Just a movie about a kid learning that you don't have to rush to grow up. Or it's the story of an unsolved kidnapping case. When Josh returns home to his mom six weeks later wearing a man-sized suit and man-sized underwear, he's gonna have a lot of questions that he needs to answer, even if he tells the truth. 
Who's gonna believe him? A therapist would probably diagnose Josh with delusions and then just assume that he's repressing all of these terrible memories from his kidnapper as a coping mechanism. What about Elizabeth Perkins, the, the love interest? Or his best friend, that red-headed kid who's clearly wise beyond his years. They know the truth. Yeah, and can you imagine what's gonna happen to the 30-year-old woman who says, I had an affair with a 13-year-old boy trapped in a 30-year-old's body? She's gonna look nuts and guilty. And the best friend corroborating it is just further proof that she's manipulating a bunch of these teenagers for her weird whatever. They'll probably throw her in jail for brainwashing these helpless kids for her sex cult and send the best friend to therapy to boot. Think about it. She works in a toy company. It doesn't look great for her. Not to mention she slept with half the men in the company, which is a very random and unnecessary detail for them to include in the movie, I'm now realizing. First it was uh, Tom Caulfield, then Hanlon, then Golding, then me. Am I missing somebody? It's not like that anymore. Which, I mean, I'm not saying is a problem for her as a woman. She's an adult and capable of making her own sexual decisions. I'm just saying they're probably going to use it against her in court. Also, when she finds out he was 13 the whole time, she says... Ten years? Who knows? Uh, maybe you should hold on to my number. I don't know if there's a right thing to say in that situation, but it's probably not that. How about... I should go. Also, when he goes back to his childhood, there's still a full entire person who's just gone now. The last thing his coworkers will remember seeing him do is... I'll be right back. Well, our oh, initial you, figure was around uh, seven... Will you excuse me? Let him be. Ken! Doesn't look great for Susan. Wow, he really ruins that woman's life. Okay, how about 13 going on 30? There's a happy ending and no one goes missing. She not only body switches, she also travels to the future, so her friends and family are none the wiser. Actually, it's her 13-year-old brain jumping into her 30-year-old body in the future, which is kind of romantic if you look at it the way the movie looks at it, which is like time travel. But actually, it's just a 30-year-old woman who's lost 17 years of her memory. like waking up from a coma, or she could just be repressing a horrible memory. Or maybe it's the magic dream house fairy dust. Or maybe she's such a terrible person that her brain cannot cope with the consequences of her decisions, so it just regresses into an adolescent state. How is she terrible? She's just a naive teenager with joie de vivre. She is selling out her company to the competitor. She's also sleeping with the husband of her coworker and when she's a teenager, she's kind of an asshole and all she wants to do is be popular. I don't want to be beautiful in my own way. I want to look like these people. But she fixes all those things. I forgive her. Yeah, but, but at the cost of her childhood friend's engagement. She breaks up a perfectly good relationship between him and his fiance. She shows up at his loft wearing a nightgown claiming to be 13 and somehow convinces him to fall in love with her even though he's already engaged. No, she doesn't marry him right away. She's at his wedding to his fiance when she encounters the magic dream house dust and goes back into her 13 year old body. He still cheats on his fiance with her. I mean, they have that romantic kiss in the park while he's still with that other woman. And then when she goes back to being 13 years old, we suddenly flash forward and she's married to Mark Ruffalo in the future, maybe. It was a projection all along. Maybe she's just a terrible person who broke up an engagement and had to go through this delusional time-traveling fantasy in order to justify her actions in the present. What? No! Think about it! Mark Ruffalo's character Matt only falls in love with Jenna because she acts like a child. If they had actually lived those in-between years together, she'd just be like a boring adult, and the chances of them actually getting together are very slim. Man, what is up with people being attracted to childlike behavior? Yes, it's very strange. Hmm. No, I guess it doesn't work for everyone. Daniel's right, though. All of these movies are just glorifying the sexualization of teenage innocence. I haven't even mentioned the creepy part in 13 Going on 30 where she has a slumber party with all of the neighborhood girls. I mean, where are these people's parents? You will never see a body-switching movie where a middle-aged man swaps bodies with a senior citizen. Or a middle-aged man to an older middle-aged man. Even though middle ages is when the bulk of the irreversible life-altering mistakes actually happen. Can I get a, a bowl of, of chocolate sugar with some sprinkles, please? With a, a like a fun spoon? Is that a thing? And if, don't tell me if it's not. Just fry something for me and make it sweet and let me have it. Look at this fucking kid on the milk. Hi everybody, I'm Soren and this is Daniel. Thank you for watching that sketch. If you liked it, 
please go into the comments and tell us how much you liked it and subscribe to our channel. Or if you didn't like it, still subscribe because maybe something else will roll along that you appreciate. Hi Dan, do you want to say anything? It's uh, 4.18 in the morning on a Monday. I guess Tuesday technically now. I have to be at the office in about six hours. Uh, okay, uh, so anyway, we really appreciate all of you. Uh, thank you for stopping by whatever time of night you're watching this. I assume it's at night, not, not or day, I guess.